language in a classroom is very good but you don't begin to experience the language until you know the slang right nowhere is this more true than in britain it's completely possible that you walk into a british bar or should i say a cruiser and don't understand more than half of what they are saying if you don't want to be this person and you want to be able to converse fluently with your british mate and impress them then i'm here to help you out <laughs> Now, the problem with slang is that it is always changing and there are trends like fashion and clothing style. A word that was commonly used in the 80s or 90s may sound dated, out of place today. I did my best, however, to find the most common and recent example. What I want you to do to let me know in the comments below how many phrases you have come across. Okay, are you ready? Let's start. Number one will be fit. In the UK, fit doesn't just mean that you go to the gym a lot. Fit is a way of saying that a person is attractive or sexy. That guy is so fit. Should I get his number? Okay, next we have loo. Yes, this is probably the British slang word you'll hear a lot if you come to the UK simply because it's the word for toilet without saying toilet. Okay, can we just stop at the cafe? I really need to go to to the loo. Next we have dodgy. I love dodgy. Dodgy is incredible useful word when British people describe anything we're a bit concerned about. It can be used to mean anything that's uh, low quality, potentially dangerous or unreliable. I wouldn't go there. It can be a bit dodgy late at night. Next we have proper. Proper is an adjective. Proper is a difficult word to define mainly because British people use it a lot in many different things. Doing things properly means doing them correctly, right? Or in the right way. In the north of England, proper can also be used for emphasize in the same way as the word very. Let's think of an example. A proper cup of tea needs milk and two sugars. That's a proper good cup of tea. Quid, quid. It's a slang word for pound bread. Can you lend me a quid for the parking machine? Thank you. Next, we have skin. Skin means that you don't have any money. Sorry, I can't come out for your birthday. I'm not getting paid until next week and I'm going to put it on skate snog to snog means to give someone kiss but specifically the kind of kiss that is not very romantic did you hear that lisa snogged peter at the christmas party cheers so you might know this word of course cheers when you want to use to toast your drinks in english but as the british like to be different we also use cheers for something else we use cheers to mean thank you and often mind you it can use a little bit sarcastically I'll give you an example. Do you want to help me clean the car? Nah, I'm good. Cheers. Naf. Naf is used to say that something is lacking in style or good taste. I was about to buy you the pink dress, but I thought it looked a bit naf. To sack off. To sack off, it means to avoid doing something or to give up doing something. Normally something that you didn't want to do in the first place. By the way, give someone the sack, it means firing this person person from his or hers last job. Think I'm going to sack off work and drinks later? I'm way too tired. Bunter. Bunter is a word to use to mean joking or teasing someone. That is meant to be friendly but often isn't. So don't get offended. It's just a bit of a bunter. Next we have my favorite bonkers. It can mean either crazy or angry depending on the context. Or someone can be completely bonkers. Or can go bonkers, meaning losing your temper. 
pissed. Now, in the United States, pissed means angry, right? In the UK, pissed means drunk and pissed off means angry. So it's a little bit confusing. I'll give you an example. I was so pissed off when I saw how pissed he got at the party. Okay, melt. Melt a slang word to describe someone who is a, a wimp or a coward. Just go and ask them out. Stop being such a melt. And here we have cheeky. Probably you heard this word. Cheeky has long been used in the UK to describe something light-hearted but a little rude. Uh, however, it is now used to describe any activity that is a little bit naughty but nice. Like, do you fancy a cheeky pint after work? To mug off. To mug someone off is to take advantage of someone or make a fool out of them. Totally not nice. That guy at the football kept laughing at me for wearing an Arsenal shirt. Told him to stop mugging me off. Mate. So mate, British slang for a friend. I'm knocked means I'm tired. Here's a good one, bloody. This is a very British thing to say, meaning very. That was a bloody good show. Rubbish. It could mean garbage or nonsense, depending on the context. Rubbish. Blind me, it's similar to the American wow. Blind me is used to describe something that takes you by surprise. Blind me? Bloke. Bloke is similar to a guy in America. It is a blanket term to describe a man in general. Here's another good one. Bollocks. One of the more well-known British terms. It actually has a multitude of meanings. It could be used to symbolize disbelief or just to talk about a man's private parts. Fortnite, some of you may already knew this term, means two weeks in time. Here's an old one, hunky-dory, normal to say final, fine, cool. Posh, another well-known term that stands past of borders in Great Britain. Posh means something that is fancy or she speaks posh. To nick, to take, to steal. Boot. When talking about a car, the boot is the trunk. Brawly. British slang term for umbrella. Here's a, another good one, but not nice one, not a compliment. Deem. This is used to describe someone that is not very smart. Is Also, a myth meaning being annoyed. And the word fag. In American English, fag is an insult meaning and very mean to say to someone who is gay. But in British slang, however, it just means a cigarette. I'm going outside for a fag. Are you coming? Very nice fag. Granny means grandma. And television, we say telly. And if you want to say to someone, wake up, you just say, wakey wakey. Boozer. Boozer means a pub. A cuppa. What does it mean, a cuppa? Cuppa comes from the phrase cup of, meaning, and pay attention, is cup of tea because we love, we love tea. And sometimes uh, stereotypes exist for a reason. The word tea is not actually needed. You only need to make it clear if it is a cuppa of coffee or cuppa of anything other than tea. Would you like a cuppa? Yeah, I'd love to. Okay, then I'll get the kettle on. Bevy, the short for the word beverage, usually alcoholic, most often beer. Now, you give it a try and how would you say in British slang this line? Pay attention, are you ready? Wake up grandma, turn off the television, grab your umbrella and let's go to the pub for a drink. Let's hear you, okay? Wakey wakey granny, turn off the telly, grab your brolly and let's go to the boozer for a bevy. That's it mate, I hope you enjoyed it. I know I did and what can I tell you? Cheers! Yes.